This conference will now be recorded. <clears throat> okay, good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Minister Spencer from Bank Street Memorial Baptist Church. Uh, today is the 10th of January, uh, 2021. This is our uh, Sunday morning uh, adult Bible study. And uh, we, were going, we are going to start off with a word of prayer. And then after that, we're going to get into our lesson for today, which comes from Luke chapter five, verses one through 11. And so let's quiet our hearts for a moment and let us, let us, let us pray. Eternal God in heaven, we thank you for blessing us to come here today to hear your word. We thank you, Father, for watching over us throughout the week and blessing us to be here today. We ask and pray, Heavenly Father, now that you would bless this Bible study ministry and all who hear it. We ask and pray, Father, that your name may be lifted up in glory and adoration, that you may be praised and glorified, Father, for all that we do. I pray this, Father, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Okay. Let's go ahead and start with our, I'm gonna minimize this for a moment. And we're going to be starting with our key verse for today. All right, so our key verse for today is, Jesus said to Simon, not you, Tony. Jesus <laughs> said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. Now this comes from Luke chapter five, verse 10 B. <laughs> now, a lesson background, last week we ended our discussion of the beginning of Jesus's mission in Luke chapter four, verses 20 through 22 where we saw Jesus reading from the scroll of Isaiah in the synagogue. And as the scripture says, that after reading and sitting down, it says that all the eyes, uh, the eyes of all uh, who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. Yes. Uh, is that the Ernestine? Yes. Good morning, Ernestine. How are you doing? <laughs> How are you doing? Oh, I am so glad this is the beginning of another week. Yes. And I'm here. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank you for being here. And so the next few words spoken by the Savior are today. This is after he has read the scripture and he has sat down. He says, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. It was seen as gracious words spoken by Joseph's boy, as the town people called. Jesus proclaimed that the messianic prophecy was being fulfilled, that he was the living manifestation of that prophecy. But it seems as if the hearers were so impressed with one of their own that they failed to hear really the words that the Messiah was saying, that the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy was in fact standing right in front of them. <clears throat> and so the amazed crowd who has said such wonderful things about Jesus' speech, as we know with the scripture from the scripture, they would soon turn on him when he continues his discourse. And because of his words, they didn't expect him to utter. In other words, the prophet begins to prophesy by first saying to the people in Luke chapter four, verse 23, you will surely say this proverb to me, Position, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also in your country. And so he goes on to, uh, to claim that no prophet is accepted in his hometown. Now, we may have been referring to, he, uh, he may have been referring to himself also when he made this statement. Now, had Jesus stopped and sat down and said nothing else, the services would have continued as usual among the, local, among the locals in the synagogue. But he aroused their anger by making lepers and Gentiles somehow superior to them, to the Jews. When he spoke of Nahum the Syrian, I mean, you know, if you read chapter, uh, chapter uh, 2 Kings chapter 5, 
uh, Nahum was a, was a Gentile. He was a king. I mean, he was a he was a a, a, a Syrian, but he was also um, a leper. And then mm-hmm. Jesus made the comment about the woman in Zarephath in First Kings chapter seventeen, and how that he came to her, and or uh, well, was Elijah that came to her, and 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 she helped him by. Um, you know, providing a, a cake of uh, of uh, bread, and um, and I think it was uh, later on that it was a, during a uh, it was during a famine that there was uh, a little bit of oil and a little bit of bread, and Elijah made that made that little bit of oil last until the the famine was just about over, mm-hmm. and so in their fury, the congregation rose up. And they threw Jesus out of the city, not only out of the synagogue, but took him out of the city and he tried to throw him off the cliff. Mm-hmm. But, you know, our Lord escapes the mob, as, uh, as the scripture says, passing through them, uh, passing through the midst of them. Now, our Lord being unfazed by their anger, he continued on to Capernaum where he continued to teach to on the Sabbaths in the synagogues. There he was healing many of their sicknesses, diseases, and unclean spirits. There seems to be a sequence of events leading up to today's lesson. So I want you to, I want you to hear this, brothers and sisters. And in particular, uh, the title of today's lesson, which is what? Call to follow. The call to follow. And so, according to Luke's gospel, Jesus is baptized. We understand that. We've read the scripture many times. The Holy Spirit comes upon him. So we know this. John was preaching, but now he's in prison. We understand this to be true. After Jesus' baptism, he is led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan 40 days. And being victorious, Jesus begins his ministry, his Galilean ministry, beginning at Nazareth, and then moving on to Capernaum, Capernaum, and continued preaching the kingdom of God to other cities. Because he says, for this purpose, I was sent. In Luke chapter 4, verse 44, it reads, and he was preaching in the synagogues of Galilee, and uh, the Masoretic uh, uh, scripture or scrolls basically says that uh, the evidence shows that it, it, instead of it being the, the Galilee, it should have read Judea. Now, the Masoretic text, uh, the Masoretes were those who wrote the Hebrew, uh, who transcribed the the old language hebrew language in david's time um, to uh, another language the same hebrew language but gave it uh consonants um, in in, to include because the ones the hebrew writing in david's time didn't have consonants i'm sorry i take that back didn't have vowels vowels and so the masoretic text included or created vowels to help the the sentence flow better in Hebrew. Uh, the reason I know that, brothers and sisters, is because I'm taking Hebrew. I'm taking an eight month course of of Hebrew, so uh, it's very interesting. And so basically, what that says is that if it said if there was an error, and it should have been Judea as opposed to Galilee, that's a big jump. That's over a hundred miles dis- difference. And so I just wanted to put that out there. But at any rate. Uh, the Savior is now traveling from the north to the south. He's going from Galilee to Judea. And you know, if you've looked at a map, you know that you can't, the Jews did not go straight from Galilee to uh, Judea. And the reason being is because what? The city of uh, the Samaritans uh, Samaritans were in the middle. Right. And And the Jews did not go through that country. They would go around it. But their hatred for the Samaritans, or the or the half breeds, if you will, the interracial uh, uh, race or people, 
they didn't want to have anything to do with it. And so uh, Jesus is now traveling from the north to the south, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And so that takes us to our lesson for today. Now, I just want to also uh, make clear that uh, when we talked about the Jews uh, going around uh, Samaria, Samaria, we know that Jesus went through it. Yes. We know this because there's a story of the woman at the well. Amen. Okay, so I just want to put that out there. Now, as we begin our study for this morning, we will be starting at uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 1. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Genezareth. The lake of Genezareth. And so our Lord has been preaching throughout the region, both the north and the south. Having healed many people at Capernaum, the news about Jesus has now spread. Uh, people were crowding around not just to be healed, but to also listen to the word of God or the words of God that Jesus was preaching near the Sea of Galilee or the Lake of Genezareth. It's the same thing. It's just a different word. Uh, the the uh, Lake of Genezareth is, 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 is also the Sea of Galilee. In either case, uh, this marked Jesus' ministry as prophetic for Jews that were steeped in the Old Testament. And so it's now time for Jesus to choose the disciples of whom he will teach and will later continue to spread the message Jesus will leave with them and bless them. And so to give you some insight, brothers and sisters, the outstanding feature of this section of the scripture, chapter five verses, uh, is chapter five verses one through six and 11. It is the growing hostility of the Pharisees because of Jesus's forthright assertions and the success of his ministry and his charismatic personality among the Jews. Now, speaking as one with authority, demonstrating his power over nature itself as seen in the miraculous drought or the drought uh, of fish, in other words, uh, seems to be the one miracle that settles it in the minds of Simon and the sons of Zebedee, who are James and John, that Jesus is the long-awaited Messiah, you see. Not to mention his healing of the sick and the leper. And so it's obvious, brothers and sisters, that the Pharisees and the scribes were at a disadvantage. Now, that's <laughs> obvious, because the Pharisees and scribes can't heal. They couldn't heal. They couldn't cast out demons. They were, technically, they couldn't even teach the, teach, teach the people uh, the right way. In other words, as opposed to Jesus, the, the Pharisees and the scribes had added all kinds of other laws, if you will, or rules and regulations to the laws that made it very burdensome for the people to, uh, to keep. And so um, it says that, but it seems that everywhere, that Jesus went teaching and preaching, and I always use the phrase, like a bad penny, the Pharisees and the scribes were always showing up. We're always there for, I don't know what it was, and I guess maybe they were following him just like his, you know, other people had followed. But in verses uh, two and three, it says, um, again, he stood by the lake of Gazareth or the Sea of Galilee and mm -hmm. saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. And so Jesus takes the opportunity to enter a boat so that he's better able to teach the large crowd that were following him. But this was no accident, brothers and sisters, that Jesus would, uh, were walking, or would be walking along the shores of the Sea of Galilee on this particular day. He knew that the men he was about to choose would be there. 
obviously. Our Lord knew that they had been fishing all night and they had caught nothing. Now, for those of you who fish, I'm sure some of you may have, I know, I don't know about you, but I know when I was young, my mother used to go to Moorhead City, North Carolina, and they oh. would fish <laughs> on that pier all night long. Uh, <laughs> Lynn, Lynn Haven Pier down Virginia Beach too. Mm -hmm. All yep. night long. And so here you have Simon, James, John, Andrew. They're all, they're all trying, they've, they've spent the whole night trying to catch fish and they caught absolutely nothing. Now I want you to think about this for a minute, brothers. There's a reason why they didn't catch nothing, okay? The Savior knew that it was time for the men to witness another miracle, aside from the healing of the sick and to, confer the, to further convince them of who he was. And Jesus knew that the men's livelihood depending on catching fish, you see. And so, again, this is not the first time our Lord would teach you from a boat. We know if you look at Mark chapter 3, verse 9, and chapter 4, verse 1, you will uh, you'll find that also. Uh, Luke chapter 5 references, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see, Mark, Matthew chapter 4, 18 through 22, and Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 20. And so both are similar in that they find Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee, selecting his disciples. So Jesus enters Simon Peter's boat. The other uh, may have been, uh, may have belonged to the uh, their other business partners, James, and John, the sons of Zebedee, the other boat. But up until this time, our Lord may have preached, uh, preached, uh, it says here that uh, up until this time, uh, our Lord may have preached on in the synagogues, and this would be his first, what we would call open air preaching. Remember, before he was, he was preaching at the synagogues, and now he is on a boat preaching. Now, verse, verses four through seven, verses four and five says, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, master or teacher, we have toiled all night long and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. So I can, I can, you can almost hear the, uh, not so much frustration, but, you know, the, uh, the lack of faith, if you will. They've been out all night long. Now, how is it that all of a sudden <laughs> Jesus is going to bring these fish in? Because see, all they've done up to this time, they've witnessed Jesus healing the sick, even raising the dead, casting out demons. So I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself. But up until this time, um, you know, they, they've, not, they've not seen Jesus do anything, any miracles where it concerns power and authority over nature, you see. And so <laughs> the fact that Peter calls Jesus master tells us that Peter acknowledges Jesus as a rabbi or teacher who has the authority, believe it or not, to direct Simon in what's called in our commentary, the expert fisherman yielded to the word of the carpenter. And I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. And so a rabbi is a religious leader of Jewish people. Some rabbis lead congregations or synagogues. Others are teachers such as Jesus. And yet others lead informally. So Jesus was a carpenter's son turn rabbi. Now, I want you to keep in mind, brothers and sisters, that Peter has witnessed the miracles of Jesus, the miracles that Jesus has done, healing the sick, yeah. um, even healing his mother-in-law. Mother-in-law, right, right. You see? Mm -hmm. But out in the waters, there's a sense of frustration in Peter's voice when replying to Jesus's direction. The men 
had been out all night long catching nothing. They were tired and probably ready to go home. And so how could Jesus, um, Peter may have thought, the one who could heal sicknesses and cast out demons possibly provide fish for the men that morning, but this miracle would not be uh, the first in which Jesus commands nature to obey. We all know the scripture. We all know the scripture. But now what's happening here, brothers and sisters, is that the disciples are witnessing, they've already witnessed Jesus' miracle and his power and authority, his power over disease, his authority over uh, demons and spiritual beings. They've already witnessed that, kind of like on land. They've already witnessed that. But soon they're going to see the master at work beyond the shores, you see. Even at some point, and we know from the scriptures, even walking on the waters that he has command over. And so uh, they move out into the deeper waters of the Sea of Galilee as Jesus uh, had commanded them. And in verse 6 says, And he said to them, Now cast out your net on the right side of the boat. And you will find some. Now, being an old salty sea dog that I am, I'm an old next Navy Nick, uh, Navy ex senior chief. Uh, we call the uh, the <laughs> Navy calls it when you're casting your net on the when Jesus says on the right side of the boat, uh, we call it the starboard side of the boat. And on the left side, we call it the port side. So they cast the nets, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of the fish they were not able to draw it in something has happened brothers and sisters and so let's not forget the title of our bible study today it's called call to follow our study may seem like just another good bible study um, but below the surface is where we need to look and today's study makes for a good example the call to study isn't just about Jesus' miracles. The call to follow isn't just about believing, and confessing, and receiving Christ as Savior. It's that and much more, brothers and sisters. It's about knowing who it is that has the words, the words of eternal life when trials and the storms of life come our way. And I'll say that again. It's about knowing who it is that has the words of eternal life when trials and storms and the storms of life come our way. It's about our settling in our heart, or it's about settling it in your heart and my heart and believing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And by believing, what do we do, brothers and sisters? We stay on course through the storms. And you and I know, brothers and sisters, that God has brought us through a lot of storms. Amen. He didn't yes. take us around it. He took us through it. Yes. Because taking, around it, taking us around it, we wouldn't learn anything. That's right. That's taking right. us through it, we've learned something, brother. Amen. Sisters. If Amen. nothing else, we've learned to do what? Trust it. Trust it, yeah. Trust, trust it. Trust it. And so the chosen disciples that Jesus will teach for the next three years came from among many of his disciples who later turned back from following the Lord. We find that in John chapter 6, verses 66 and 67. Amen. The miracles done by Jesus was a testimony of who he was. Yes. But the greatest miracle was yet to come. Yeah. The 12 disciples chosen by Jesus, they believed, hearing his words and seeing his many miracles. When asked by Jesus, will you also leave? He was talking to the 12, the last 12 disciples who were still hanging around after everybody else left. Simon Peter said, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Shall we go? See, you have the words of eternal life. See, also, 
we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the son of the living God, the yes. Holy One of God. Yes. And so in showing miracles and signs, Jesus was prepared, was preparing the hearts of the 12 disciples who believed in him, who he was, and that the scriptures and who it was that the scriptures spoke of. The miracles underscore the authenticity and power of Jesus the Christ. His teachings show that he was the one the Holy Scripture spoke of from Genesis 3 until that day that Jesus was now training his disciples and that he spoke with authority. We know that because the people were saying they had never heard anybody speak like this. The scribes and the Pharisees didn't speak like this. Jesus spoke with authority and the people were impressed. You see, and so now another miracle is about to be done, which will further convince the 12 disciples that Jesus is the one sent from God. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, the Apostle Paul makes a, makes a most profound statement. He says, for we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus the Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. And so we see that in today's lesson. Simon Peter is witnessing not only among the, the, the things that, the, you know, the miracles that he saw on land, now he's witnessing Jesus's power at sea and the command over fishes and, and the command over nature, you see. And so Peter saw firsthand the works of the Lord. And so verse seven says, so they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and they feel and feel uh, both the boats so that they began to sink. Now, having obeyed the Lord, the men now find themselves struggling to contain a massive number of fish. So many, in fact, that Peter and Andrew had to call for the help uh, for another boat to help bring in the fish before the net completely tore apart. And having so many that even their boats were starting to sink. And so, you know, you would have, someone would ask the question, well, what if Peter hadn't obeyed Christ? Well, we know the end. We know the answer to that. We'd have a different story by now. We probably wouldn't be having this story. But he did. He did. And um, this isn't the first time that something like this had happened. We find in John chapter 21, verses 5 through 11, of a similar incident that occurred, but the differences in details are noticeable enough to make it clear that there are two separate incidents here. And so I encourage you uh, to read John chapter 21, verses mm -hmm. 5 through 11. I, re I reverse my numbers. Okay. 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 John chapter 21, verses 5 through 11. 5 through 11, thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, verse 8 says, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. O Lord. Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Though all were astonished, Peter in particular was not only awestruck, but was brought to the manifestation of divine power. In other words, he had the conviction of his own conscience, the acute awareness of his own unworthiness. Peter may have thought he knew everything about fishing, but he underestimated Jesus's power over nature as well as over sicknesses, demons, and diseases, and death itself. 
And so there was an awakening in Peter, an awakening of the greatness of Jesus and he as a sinner, as he makes his confession. Peter saw something. Peter saw himself as a sinner and he saw the greatness of Jesus. This is something we also need to be acutely aware of, brothers and sisters, that Jesus is the Lord of our life. He is God. Yes. And we are his creation. We need to Amen. keep that, that perspective. Amen. We need to keep that perspective. We were created. We didn't mm -hmm. just come about. We were mm -hmm. created by God. Yeah. We are his creation. Every molecule in our body, he knows. Yes. Every molecule. Yes. Jesus does not have to touch waters. He didn't touch the waters. He simply commanded the fishes to come together where the men were. As a matter of fact, he didn't even have to verbally say it. He, he in his mind, he commanded and it was done. Mm -hmm. If God can speak the universe into existence. Mm -hmm. Surely he can speak to a few fish. Amen. Yes. Prophet Amen. Isaiah had a similar awakening when he saw in a vision of the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. And the scripture says, and the train of his robe filled the temple. The temple. Wow. With a convicted heart, just like Peter, Mm -hmm. Isaiah could only say what? Woe is me, mm -hmm. for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips mm -hmm. and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5. Isaiah experienced the same thing when he saw that vision. And just as Peter is about to be called to become Jesus' great disciples, his disciple, this was Isaiah's call to become the greatest prophet of the Old Testament. When called to explain himself to God, Job only had these few words to say. This is in Job chapter 40, verse 4. When, when, he had, when he was called to explain himself, when he understood what was really going on, hear the words of Job. Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer you? I lay my hand over my mouth. Job chapter 40, verse 4. And so in uh, chapter in verses nine and 10, it reads, for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, now, up until this time, uh, people were astonished at Jesus' teaching in the synagogues. They were astonished at his wisdom. They were astonished beyond measure because the Lord had went around healing the sick, making the deaf to hear, the mute to walk, the lame to, uh, I'm sorry, the mute to speak, and the lame to walk. He brought back the dead, and many were astonished at Jesus' power over spiritual beings. And so these were miracles done so that the scriptures might be fulfilled according to Isaiah chapter 29, verse 18 and 19, and Isaiah chapter 35, verses 5 and 6. Now, Jesus' demonstration of power and sovereignty will again be witnessed by the disciples when our Lord commands the fish to be gathered so that the men will see not only, not only that Jesus has power over nature, but he, that he also provides for his people. 
And what I mean by that is uh, Jesus understood that the disciples had gone all night and hadn't caught anything. And that the disciples, you know, fishing was was their uh, it was it was their livelihood. That's what they understood it. I mean, they they understood that their their livelihood came from fishing. So now they've gone out all night long. They've caught nothing. And in Jesus's not only compassion and mercy, but knowing what has happened throughout the night, Jesus is, does Jesus do, uh, uh, does these things. And so he understands that uh, you know these men have to provide for their family. Now this is just these are just things that uh, among the 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 miracles. This is just one other thing that Jesus uh, is is doing. He is providing for their family. They will one day have a good catch for Jesus is saying this to the men. For they will one day have a good catch of men and women. And we're going to see this in a second. Jesus makes provision for the men beyond what they had imagined. Our Lord will do the same for us, brothers and sisters. He will do the same for us. Now, sadly, there will be one last astonishment done by the Lord, and that would be his death on the cross. Listen to the words of Isaiah chapter 52, verse 14. Just as many were astonished at you, so his visage was marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. You see, but this sadness will later turn to joy when the disciples see the risen Christ three days after his cruel death and crucifixion. That's what Isaiah chapter 52, 14 is referring to. And so as we go to our last section, it speaks about Jesus's call. Jesus says to him, after he says to Simon, he says, don't be afraid, do not be afraid, he says. From now on, you will catch men. So Peter recognizes Jesus as more than just a healer. And that recognition brought fear and respect, and rightly so. It is the same fear or reverence and respect that we should have, brothers and sisters. Our Lord penetrates the soul of Peter and comforts him with the words of peace and with prophecy. When he says, from now on, you will fish for people. So Jesus will later teach his disciples how to catch women, men and women by preaching the gospel and by and commissioning them and us, brothers and sisters, to continue to spread the word and to make disciples of others by leading them to the Savior. All we can do is spread the gospel. All we can do is share the word of God. Yes. yes. See, all we can do, brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. is plant the seed. That's all we can do. Amen. Sometimes Amen. we can come by later on and, and water that seed a little mm -hmm. bit, water mm -hmm. the ground. Yes. But all that's all we can do. We can plant it and we mm -hmm. can water it. Amen. What does the word say? God has to give the increase. Amen. God gives the increase. You see. Amen. And for the disciples, the spreading of the gospel will be demonstrated with power given to them by Jesus to heal the sick and to bring even demons into obedience. And you'll find that in Luke chapter 10, verse 17. And so they brought, uh, when they brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. I think I would have done that too, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. I'd get on that boat. Amen. I think I would have done that too. No longer needing any more convincing. Mm -mm. The fishermen leaves their boats, their boats and nets, and they follow Jesus. 
This was a turning point in the lives of the disciples, being willing to leave their livelihood and follow the Savior. But do not think that because these men have forsaken their jobs as fishermen, that somehow their families would suffer. That's not the case, brothers and sisters. Just as Jesus fed the 5,000 and the 4,000 with a few fish and a few loaves of bread, Jesus can also provide for the families of these men. But for now, the Savior will begin to groom these men who will later become the catalyst in spreading the gospel throughout the world. The same gospel that I'm talking about now. 2,000 years ago, that gospel Mm -hmm. is still being spread. Amen. Christianity, brothers and sisters, is the largest religion. Mm -hmm. I use the term Christianity, but I mean the term religion, because I think Christianity is a relation, but it's neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. Right now, it has, you know, there's about 2.5 billion followers as of 2020. Christians make up a majority of the population in 157 countries and territories. Now imagine the countless millions who have lived and died since the Savior's ascension into heaven. Because the numbers I've given you are 2020 numbers. Imagine 2,000 years ago. The disciples will be taught and they will continue on with what the Savior started. It will continue to spread the gospel of salvation. And we're going to explain this. I'm going to explain this more in detail. And what I mean by that, that term salvation. I'm going to go in more detail when we talk next week, when we talk about what does it really mean to be saved? What does the word mean? We need to understand this, brothers and sisters. What does that word mean? And so I'm going to go into detail uh, about this this subject next week. A gospel sent from God, given to the Son to deliver to his chosen apostles, that they may continue what Jesus has started after the Savior's resurrection and ascension back to glory. And so next week, we will discuss again, uh, going to some real good discussion on what it means to be saved. Amen. And so Amen. with that, that'll end our lesson for today. Our words to remember comes from John chapter 1. I'm sorry, John chapter 16, verses 33. 33. Verse 33. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Again, we find in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Amen. And the world Ooh. is passing away, yes. and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Amen. He or she who does the will of God abides forever. And that is absolutely true brothers and sisters. That is absolutely true. Yes, this body goes back to dust, but we live on. Mm -hmm. Soul, the spirit lives on. God does not obliterate the soul that he created. You see? So we live on, and we will live on for eternity. Now, where we spend that eternity is up to you and I, brothers and sisters. Amen. But we're going to spend eternity somewhere. You can count on that. Yes. But for children of God, for the believers, we know that the scripture says what? We know that in the Thessalonians, it talks about the rapture. Mm-hmm. In 2 Corinthians, it talks about we're having a new body. Mm-hmm. So not only will we live forever, 
Not only will the soul live forever, but the scripture tells us that we are going to inherit a whole new body, a body, a spiritual body, a glorified body, a body yeah. like that of the Savior. Yeah. Now, I want you to keep this in mind, brothers and sisters. Remember when Jesus came into at Pentecost, he came into that room and he said, and, and they were all in the room and he just came in the room. Mm -hmm. right. They could see him. Mm -hmm. They could touch him. As a matter of fact, they were so amazed that they couldn't believe it. It was him. Mm -hmm. What did he say? Jesus said, well, give me a piece of fish. Mm -hmm. See that it is me. It is, I am flesh and bone. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is saying that Jesus' glorified body is a spiritual body. Yes. We are going to inherit, according to the word of God, a spiritual body. So yes. that rapture that we are going to experience will one day come back to come together with our new body. Our yes. souls will di discard this old body and in the resurrection will receive a new body. Yes. Now, this is scripture. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is read First uh, <clears throat> Corinthians chapter 15. Mm -hmm. All you have to read is Second Thessalonians, mm -hmm. First and Second Thessalonians, mm -hmm. and you will find these words to be true. So yes. I want to encourage you to give praise to God, yes. to glorify God, yes, to know that all who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, as he has said, at the last day, I will raise him up. Jesus has said that all who believe on me have eternal life. Yes. God has said, I am God. God is mm -hmm. not a man that he should lie. Mm -hmm. And God, the scripture tells us also that what? My words will not come back to me void. Mm -hmm. Before a word, a tittle, mm -hmm. a jot <laughs> and a tittle is changed. The whole universe would have to disappear. That's how that's how promising God's word is. Yes. So with that, <laughs> brothers and sisters, we will end in prayer for today. Our, our lesson resources have come from John chapter 16, Isaiah chapter 29, Isaiah chapter 35, and 1 John chapter 2. And so with that, brothers and sisters, let's uh, close for our uh, Sunday school, uh, Sunday uh, school Bible study for today, with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God in heaven, we thank you so much for your word. Yes. We ask and pray, Father, that Lord, you would give us the desire to draw closer to you. Yes, Lord. Lord, we draw closer to you when we're walking in obedience into your holy word. We draw closer to you, Lord, when we are in prayer, yes. when we stay in prayer, just as the Savior was always in prayer. Yes. Yes. We draw closer to you, Lord, when we read your holy word yes. and understand. Yes. We draw closer to you, Heavenly Father, when we trust and believe the Holy Spirit, when we are led yes. and guided by him. Mm -hmm. and so, Father, I just ask and pray to draw us closer to you. Please, Lord. Let your will be done in our lives. Yes. Let us surrender our will, O oh Lord, that yes. your will might be done. Yes. And Father, we will give you the praise and the glory that only you deserve, mm -hmm. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes. I pray this, Father, in the matchless and holy name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. 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 Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen.